Today I'm going to show off my latest project which is this word clock and as you can see it is not in English it is in Hungarian this is something that I wanted to do for many many years I thought I would do this like maybe six months ago because then my older son was learning to read and I think this would be a good idea just to you know read something when he's I think he knew the clock already but you know just uh, learn some words but my younger one is going to uh, first grade next year so I think it's good going to be equally useful and as you can see it's a word clock for which I have used a PX uh, matrix display these are you know like outdoor rated matrix displays that you can get um, relatively cheaply from Aliexpress they are definitely cheaper than the similar uh, NeoPixel displays and as, as far as I can tell they work just as great and for this uh, project I have also created a PCB so if you want to drive any of these displays with an ESP8266 you can also download my PCB design and you only need to modify the software so it was a big learning for me just to get uh, how to drive the pixel sorry how to drive this PX display also how to design the PCB so even though that you most probably don't want a Hungarian word clock you can use the PCB and my sketch if you want to use the display to something else and of course I've written the code in a way that um, it can also be adapted to other languages as well so if you want to use your English, German, whatever language maybe you can start off with my code and this video is going to be fairly long so I'm going to put a table of contents up here so you can skip to the parts that uh, you are interested in I'm going to talk about the the display and the code and and the PCB as well so yeah it's going to be quite long and just a few words about the display so it well of course it's a word clock so it shows you the time there is there are no buttons on this uh, display so it gets the time from an NTP server so you just plug it in and then it's going to show the time automatically there's nothing that needs to be done of course it needs active internet connection for that it has an LDR so it can sense the ambient light and adjust the display brightness accordingly and uh, every minute it I, I think you have seen it already every minute it's going to do uh, a word animation where it's going to randomly lit some letters or actually it's a letter animation it has no real purpose it just makes the screen a little bit more interesting and the other feature of uh, which I'm going to put a time lapse in here mm -hmm. is that the actual display mimics the the sunrise and the sunset so at the moment it's daytime so the display is white when it comes to sunset it would gradually fade into a red color and then it fades into a blue color which is the nighttime color and then again in the morning at sunrise it fades into an orange and then from the orange back to white so these are the extra features that uh, this word clock has and other than that the finish or the clock phase is a one and a half um, millimeter in sorry and the clock phase is a one and a half millimeter uh, mile steel which I've laser cut the the letters into and I just use 150 grit sandpaper just to make it like a brushed finish and I just used spray on lacquer to seal it and protect it from rust so that would be the introduction please enjoy the video so I was doing this recording before I fixed the um, the front face the metal uh, clock face let's say um, because I thought it's just easier to handle that way so just, this is just a piece of paper that I have fixed with these two clamps and that's how it looks like I mean it's difficult to say because it's black and black black on black but I have this uh, 10 by 10 matrix which covers the the 30 by 30 inner pixels of the display and I'm just not using the the outer rows and columns uh, that's this was the easiest way because uh, of course you know 32 by 32 or 64 by 64 is uh, commercially available and well actually I couldn't find a 64 by 64 so this is the biggest form factor I could get so so this is 192 millimeters uh, square so you know just uh, a few uh, millimeters shy of uh, 20, 20 centimeters so this is the biggest one I could find and just to show the 3d printed parts so there is this mesh or so this grid 
of 10 by 10, 10 by 10 letters, and each letter is, you know, three by three pixels. And you can see that, oops, sorry, you can, or you can't see that there are ridges on the, um, on the display, and I mirror the negative of that ridge into the screen. So it fits, uh, sorry, into the, into the raster. So it fits, you know, fairly snug on the display. And I also have these four corner pieces, and these are actually all separate because uh, you know the uh, the grooves under it that it needs to match into or mesh into are different. So make sure that you don't you know print four times one of the corners. That's why in the in the provided files there are you know four different corners, um, and of course they need to go into the correct place. Otherwise they don't you know perfectly fit. And I just super glued all these together. And, and of course the reason the raster and the corners are different because my 3D printer is 20 by 20 so it, it just wouldn't fit with the corners. I had some very light filament so I actually just got spray painted to black and I think it works just fine. It's only 5 millimeters thick and, uh, but it looks like that it's going to be enough. And if I flip it around then I have a few other 3D printed components. So I have four other corners. I think they are, I'm calling them the lower corners, um, even though they are you know, bigger and higher. And the main part or the main purpose of these and the reason I have these feet on them is these feet just a couple of millimeters uh, more than the actual PCB. So if you mount it on a wall, this will keep the, um, you know, the electronics away from the wall and yeah, provide circulation and you know, it's not going to scratch your wall. So that's the whole idea behind that. And, uh, and th these corners also fix the, all the front parts on the display. So they just sort of like clamp over the, out of the display. I've also put some screw holes here so you can uh, screw them down to the actual display. I messed up the dimensions on mine, but I've modified the drawings, but I just haven't reprinted them because even without the screws here, you know, it's, it's all tight. It's not, it's not going anywhere because they, these four corners and also the ridges on the screen keep the whole thing in place. And the only other two things is I have this uh, sort of like a hook. So if you have a screw or a nail in the wall, you can hang the display like that. Sorry, I'm always out of the frame. And I've, have, um, I've also made this other part which looks like a a checker piece and this is just to keep the uh, the wire or the USB lead uh, next to the wall so it's not hanging closer to the you know the edge of the display and also you can put a cable tie around it so it also acts as a strain relief so the weight of the USB is not going to pull on the ESP and um, that's it and since we are here let's talk about the electronics so I so this is the this is the ribbon cable which came with a display and I wanted to show that this ribbon cable it's actually quite tight so okay I'm not going to remove it right now so this plugs into the to the board that the key is facing the ESP obviously ESP plugs on like this so the antenna is pointing up and um, for this particular display you have to put the the jumpers like that uh, so this is the, the jumper for the F lead and uh, below is the jumper for the E lead. And as I said, that's the LDR. So I just um, kept the original leads. I put some heat shrink so they don't touch each other and I just bent it away. So it's observing the ambient light from the side and that's the pull down resistor. So this is the resistor that pulls it down to ground and the other leg of the LDR is uh, connected to 3.3 so they the two co uh, basically create a voltage divider which is being sensed by the A0 input of the ESP and that's it oh yeah and of course well probably the most important thing is the power so again that's the lead that you are getting uh, with the display so it plugs into the the connector which has two ground and two VCC lines 
and I just basically creamed the um, the provided lead and uh, actually it's like it looks like an like a Y lead so it has both of the ground and both of the um, VCC lines so I just connected them to this terminal block and as I mentioned also in the GitHub the 5 volt and a ground is connected to the 5 volt and a ground of the ESP so if you have a separate 5 volt power supply you can connect it here and that would power the display and the ESP if you want to use the USB lead like I did then that obviously powers the US uh, sorry the ESP but then the power for flows through the display as well and this USB power works with this particular setup because I'm not lighting all of the LEDs at once so based on my measurements you know in normal operation in this word clock operation it doesn't draw more than two or three hundred milliamps so like a like a decent one amp power supply should be able to provide enough voltage for this display and um, well the display and the ESP as well and of course it's not going to crash so I have this running for weeks now and actually I the, the piece of code which is running on here um, reports the uptime so if the ESP would restart then I would notice that the uptime jumps down to or you know resets to zero and actually I do have a monitoring on that one and it hasn't happened on this one so the code is stable power supply is stable for this operation but again if you want to use it for something else where you would have a lot more LEDs lit and a lot of brightness then yes you should use a separate 5 volt power supply and just to mention something about the mounting again so the board goes on like this while the, you see the arrows pointing up and also we have the arrows pointing to the right so that tells you that on the left is the PE or P, sorry PI like P input and on the right that's the P output which is connected with the lead I've now removed the board so you can see that this connect well actually both of the connectors are keyed so the flex cable only goes in one way into this connector and that's the ground and the VCC connection so that's the power connection so P input P output and and the power there is nothing else on the board or I should say there's nothing else on the display and that's how the board looks like and so that's the power connection when I was assembling this unit I didn't have access to these keyed sockets so what I did here is I just used some you know regular 1 point, uh, 0 0.1 inch pitch uh, female headers so is the female no this is the male headers and I just use two of them so I, I use the single row and I just use two of them next to each other and you know it just works fine because it's 1.0.1 pitch either way and actually this is <laughs> it's a very good one that I'm using this because I have designed this board very small and the keyed socket with the uh, screw terminal wouldn't fit next to each other so if I plug this in you can see that it just barely you know clears the um, the power socket so you just have to remember that the keyed part of this socket has to face the ESP and that's it and of course the ESP plugs in like so so you can see the uh, on the sales screen it says antenna so you plug in like this and this connector which plugs into the P in uh, sorry the well, port in or PI connector is again just uh, female headers or sockets and again I just used uh, single line ones next to each other just uh, push them together maybe I've su super glued them together but again it's the perfect pitch it's uh, you know plugs in easily so there are no issues and I've already mentioned about the LDR and the pull down resistor there's nothing else on the board and the two with the jumpers are the E and the D connections and you don't see the silk screening on mine but on the final version that I have uploaded I added some labels whether you know which port is the which is ground and which is um, which is data so basically if you connect the if you put the jumper that way on the left that means that you are connecting the the output uh, that you are connecting the pin of the display to ground and that's usually what happens when that pin is not used and if you put the jumper on the right that means you are connecting that pin to the to the pin of the ESP so in my case on this particular display the pin E is not used and a pin D 
is used. So I need to connect it that way. And also in the sketch, you have to do the same thing, uh, uh, you know, according to how you are going to put the jumpers in. Before I go over to the actual Arduino sketch, let's have a very quick look at the GitHub. So this is the GitHub link. Of course, it's going to be in the video description, so you don't have to remember that. And uh, when you come here, you will see that there is a link for the English documentation. So I've translated the README in English, so you can see everything here. I try to be fairly descriptive and the things that I didn't want to document well, actually that's in this YouTube video. So I'm going to put the YouTube video link somewhere here as well once it is uploaded. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if I go back to the, you know, the, the folders, then you can see that uh, the code and the INO file is here. And I have a couple of folders. The um, IMG folder is just contains the images that you can see here in the, um, uh, in the readme as well. And Besides that, there is a designs folder where I see where I have the, you know, some of the PDFs, doc, uh, sorry, the Excel documents where I design the clock face. I don't think that's going to be very um, interesting for you because, well, that's all the Hungarian stuff. And I've also included the AutoCAD drawings for the clock face that I uh, CNC milled or sorry, CNC laser cut. Again, you would definitely design your own. I mean, you can look at it if you want to. And what's more important is the 3D, where it contains all the uh, 3D files. And I've already talked about the various bits in the, in the 3D model. So you find the G-code and also the STL files. So if you want to um, create your own um, slicing and or just want to do it in one, just yeah, go ahead and use the STL files and then generate your own G-code. Let's head over to the Arduino ID. And I'm going to start with the easy ones which is the settings.h and this contains all the settings and you find the, diff, uh, the description here already for each of them and I think most of them are self-explanatory so I don't want to go into the details of that probably I can explain the the brightness control a little bit uh, a little bit more so what I have done here is you can spe specify what is the lowest um, analog A0 value that you get with your, you know, resistor and the LDR. I mean, I'm guessing, you know, that would be most probably low. And um, for that, you can um, specify what is the minimum brightness of the screen. I left it at 50. So I found that, you know, with 50 brightness, it's, uh, you know, it just gives a little bit of illumination. So even in a dark room, it's not, it, well, it's at least it's not bright for me. And then, of course, you can de define the maximum uh, and the ma well, the maximum brightness is, is 255. So that's the maximum brightness for the screen. And any value in between, the program is going to linearly interpolate the, uh, the appropriate brightness value. And I think if I remember the code, it gets checked every 10 seconds. So the brightness value gets updated every 10 seconds. And the rest of it is just, yeah, your SSID, your password, MQTT details and that's pretty much it and you can have some customization on the the word animation as well in the ntp.h there are just a couple of values here so you set your gmc offset which is in minutes and your latitude and longitude and this is required for the sunset and the sunrise calculation so the the color transitions are matched based on the sunset and the sunrise in your location and probably the last one, I can go through this words underscore uh, hun dot h. And this is where I store how the display needs to be lit for every single hour and the, you know, the five minute interval. And to better understand this, I've, um, I've just opened that Excel file, which is attached in the design folder. And that's where I designed my clock face. So you can see the 10 by 10 matrix that I used and then the different letters and uh, anything which is light gray is actually not part of the cloak so those are just random letters and then in the rest you can see what the um uh, yeah the different you know one two three four and then you know quarter to quarter past and all these and i've also designed a um, a an hour so what would be the display if it's three o'clock three o five three ten three twenty and then all the way to three twenty five and 
what I've documented in so in the uh, so in this header file I have two arrays one is the hours array which is going to give me all the numbers that needs to be lit for every single hour so at one hour I need to lit 75 76 77 and 255 and the way this works is originally I was planning to use a, a NeoPixel uh, display for this one so the idea was that I would use a, you know, a strip of NeoPixels which I would break down to like you know 10, 10 pieces in a row and I would just wire them together so when I program it it would look like that you know this is pixel number one and this is pixel number three uh, sorry one, 100 so when I say that at one o'clock, okay, I don't actually have the example, but this is the word uh, for one in Hungarian, and this is in row seven and in position, you know, five, six, seven. So that would be pixels 75, 76, and 77. And this is what I've documented here. And then 255 is just the end. That's basically just, uh, you know, test the code that on well that's the end there is no more letters that need to be lit because if I try to pa read past these three values then I would you know get zeros and then you know the, the first uh, letter goes lit all the time so 255 is just the end that's just to terminate the array and the array has a size which is the highest number of pixels for any particular hour that I need to lit which is probably this one the 12 o'clock and similarly I have something which is called the minutes so that contains um, it, it works pretty much the same so for every five minute so that's the you know these are the letters that needs to be lit when the it's exactly you know like one hour or two hours and I'm actually highlighting these few letters here which says like in English it would say a clock so this is 97 98 99 and then if it's five past, it's this, it's 10 past, 15 past, 20 past, 25 past, 30 past, or half past, and all the way to, you know, 55. And that's it. So if you can fit your word clock in a 10 by 10 matrix, and if you can also describe your, you know, time in a, in a five minute interval, then all you need to do is, you know, start replacing these numbers here. And if you have a case where you have more numbers, like more than 13 numbers or 12 or whatever, then you can increase this uh, minute size and the hour size here. And that's just basically a number which defines how big the array needs to be in order to fit all the, all the digits or all the numbers. If you do your own, obviously you can rename it to verse underscore something. And in the main file, the ino file you can just change the include so it you know includes your word file and not my word file and before i go further into this document i want to mention that i used two resources when i started investigating how to drive these px matrix displays and then one of them is the actual library that i use to drive it so that's the from two dom the px matrix and if you start scrolling it down, there is an awful lot of information on the various sizes that are available and then what the scan rate is. And it talks about how the how these display work and you know the the shift registers and you know the address input lines that I talked about, the A, B, C, D, E. And also it talks about these connectors and then and how they look like and what are the different connections for each of these pins i couldn't find this this uh, sales screen on mine so i was just assuming that it's the same hub 75 version and actually it was and then it talks a lot about the connection you know you can see that the a b c and here you see don't see d and e because in the this display it's most uh, it's most probably not connected and so you see lots more information on here about the different uh, different modes and cabling and and then some of the common issues that you might find so if your screen looks like this or 
if it if it does something else weird but by the way there is an example code so that's obviously the first one that you run just to make sure that your screen is running and then you can start implementing your own and the other really good resource was this um, instructable page where this guy also used the 64 by 32 display so it was bigger than mine but um, at some point here in this document there was again a really good write-up of the different uh, pins and how they get used okay so and uh, um, actually this is the wiring that i used and that's the the wiring based on the my pcb is uh, is made of of course the only other thing i've added to this design is the ldr and the resistor but other than that the connection is just like here and he talks about power and power management and the alignment and I think at some point, yeah, he talks about whether the CD and the E pins are used for what type of scan uh, displays. And here, as you can see, it, he talks about that for his uh, display, only ABC is labeled, but this could be a D, sorry, this could be D and E. And, and this also just suggests, and also he is um, talking about somewhere here that the way you can tell whether D and E is used on your display is that you check with the multimeter and if they are connected to ground means that well internally they are connected to ground so they are not being used so that gives you a clue how you need to set the jumpers on my PCB and how you also need to modify the the definition in the uh, sketch which I'm going to talk about uh, just in a second okay i think that's it yeah and then it's it's actually described here but i'm going to go into my code and show you there as well okay good so looking at the code um i mean most of this definition came from the example files so there is you know definitions of the uh, maximum height and width and the color depth and these are the key mappings for the es sorry the pin mappings for the esp32 and the ESP8266. Again, I haven't modified uh, anything on this one, so this came for the example, and that's where the important part comes in. So the guy had, um, I think, this type of display. No, 60, 32 by 60. Anyway, I, I'm not really sure. So you can see here when you define your PS matrix, you obviously define the size, so minus 32 by 32. And here you start defining the different pins. So if you have a board which only uses ABC pins, you have to use this line. The board that uses ABCDE, like mine, you have to use this definition and of course comment out the rest. And then if you have a board maybe like a 64x64 64 64, which uses all, all the pins from A to E, then you use this definition. So that's the that's the secret and in order to figure out which type you have is well you can you can just you know try it out on all different combination or just use the multimeter method that i mentioned just below or just before uh, some definitions of different variables and uh, let me just skip to the parts that i actually did i know anything about it's uh, it uses an interrupt to update the display so you know of course this display doesn't have any memory so it needs to be updated continuously and um, and here i just defined some some colors and these are the random colors that get used in the word animation so they are not you know truly random colors they are just selected from this list of uh, what is it six or seven and um, I actually have the serial set up as well at 96,000 uh, bouts or 9600 bouts and um, one more thing so besides the pin layout and the board definition you also have to have a couple of these display settings correct in the setup uh, procedure so first of all in the begin you specify what kind of uh, scan is it 1 8 scan or 1 16 or 1 32 scan and usually you find that in the sellers page in aliexpress it's usually mentioned there so the next one is this fast update. I'm not really sure what's the difference. You can again read the library. It talks about that. 
The next one is the, uh, the scan pattern. I mean, honestly, this is the first that I used and it worked for me. Use the test program. If the test program produces the same output that you see here, where is it? Here, then, you know, your screen works. So it starts drawing line every eight lines and then it adds different colors. And honestly, it was a long time ago. I don't remember what was the, the color pattern. And there was one more thing which was special on my screen is pretty much earlier early on i figured out that the color order was not rgb it's actually bgr and this method has been added to the development version of this library but that was already like probably two three months ago so most probably by the time you read this video and you download the library you get the the version which actually includes the set color order as an available method if you get a compiling error then it means that you just need to um, you know download the you know the actual source code and recompile it and i may still have the issues somewhere here but i actually i think i it got confirmed but i had the issue on this open and uh, you can even see the uh, this you can read through the discussion here okay going back to the code and i set a default brightness which would get overwritten with the uh, whatever the, uh, the ldr is reading anyway and the rest is just set up set up of the screen set up of the wi-fi um setting up um, it well it's not really necessary i also created a a web server or initiated a web server which basically just says work clock i just like to add these so i'm you know just by looking at the ip of the device if i put it into a browser at least i know what this what the device is um, i just have too many esps around the house and what it also does i'm not sure if i have the footage of the actual booting up that when it tries to connect to the wi-fi network then it starts uh, every second it starts uh, lighting up the fur uh, you know from the top left corner one ver one sorry one letter at a time in red when it's trying to connect to the wi-fi and when it's doing some of the other stuff like the um, setting up the you know connecting to mqtt and uh, setting up the udp ports and everything then it just uses a different color so you see that it starts with uh, red and then it go i think it uses yellow and then well you can see in the code then it uses green i mean these go really really fast and then finally it will uh, again display yellow at the end and that's when it's actually waiting for oh no yellow is the one where it's waiting for the mqtt server and then once it gets the time from the ntp server then it starts displaying the clock face so as I said, there is no manual buttons. The all ports of the ESP is used. The only way to set the time is just by connecting the NTP server on startup. MQTT reconnect logic. There's nothing special there. Uh, I have this refresh stats. It just creates a JSON string out of the RSSI, the uptime and the actual brightness. And that gets pushed over MQTT and it also gets logged in the serial log. So when you're trying to find you in the brightness control, you just hook it up to your serial, you, you know, you start the serial monitor and you will get the brightness value every 10 seconds in the serial output. And that's the actual logic which calculates the, the brightness. So it takes that, those four parameters that I talked about and then anything in between gets calculated based on a linear, is it linear regression? linear interpolation handle ntp response um, yeah you don't have to touch it this um, gets the response from the ntp server calculates the uh, you know the gmt offsets and also calculates the sunrise and the sunset time for a particular day and that all gets printed in the serial output so you can view all the data there MQTT callback. So the only thing that I'm doing here is is the ASP subscribes to a sleep topic, and this into this sleep topic I can send uh, one or zero, 
and if I send one then the device goes into sleep which means that it completely turns off the screen so this is just for me if I you know go to sleep I don't like any displays to be around so I just want darkness so you know it just goes dark it still functions and the uh, you're still connected to Wi-Fi and talks to the NTP server and does everything it just the screen is blank and when you send a zero to the sleep then the screen comes back calculate colors so this is as I says here this is the function which calculates the actual colors the screen need, the, you know the letters needs to be on based on whether it's uh, daytime nighttime sunset or sunrise and it also does all the transition in between and there is no you know fancy logic in here it's all like you know just simple calculation based on the time so if you want to change any of the colors you just have to dive into you know each of these values and and in some cases also you know change this calculation logic in here but yeah you can do that if you don't like my colors this render time is a function which calculates the actual time because the way I store the time is I store what was the the millis value when the NTP response was received and and I also you know store what the NTP time was and you know based on the current millis value versus the millis that the NTP was updated I know how many milliseconds has passed since when I knew what the time was and that's how I calculate the time at any point in time and yeah and I'm using timers just for the you know all the different calculations I have this timer which executes every second and I do some you know some of the screen refresh logic and the brightness checks gets triggered uh, based on this one and the next important function is the update words so that calculates what letters needs to be lit at every at any given you know time or seconds or minutes and uh, what it does it it calculates the, the actual time and then from that time it picks up what the hour is and then picks up what the you know the five minute interval is and then it starts a lot of conversation and if you are planning to convert this project to other, another language I'm pretty sure you have to go into here because there are a few things in the um, in the Hungarian language which I have basically hard coded in here and there are some very obvious ones so if the hour is bigger than 12 then just subtract 12 because on a, on a clock you know unless you want a military clock which says you know 22 hours that would be just 10 hours so that's the piece which is doing that and some of the stuff here is I think it's language dependent so for example this piece or uh, that these couple of lines here is um, it could be you know specific to the or well, could be special to the Hungarian language because in English you say you know quarter past so you know hour and uh, any you know 15 minutes after the hour is quarter past the hour but in Hungarian we say it's one fourth of the next hour so basically you know quarter two uh, quarter past and uh, sorry uh, quarter past half past and quarter two in Hungarian it's like quarter of the hour half of the hour and three quarters of the hour so it's the the hour part is always the next hour it's not the you know the hour that has just passed so that's why this is why I'm doing here that if the if the minute is more than you know 10 minutes because um, five past is uh, is basically hour and five minutes an hour and ten minutes if I try to translate it but as I said anything which is from the quarter onwards it's the quarter of the next hour or the half of the next hour or three quarters of the next hour so that's why I'm you know increasing the hours and of course if it rolls over to 13 then it's it's one hour and if it's the the you know the the clock is zero hours then it's actually 12 12, 12 hours I mean that's how you say it in uh, or you know that's how it shows up in the clock face and then once you have these conversions then we just look at these arrays to tell us what uh, you know letters needs to be lit and so I just collect all the letters uh, into a separate array I saw that array so then when the animation comes it start lighting up the letters from you know the top and the left and then it sort of like you know scans to the left and then down on the display 
and that's what happens here. And in here I have taken the liberty to actually do a loop here with a, a small amount of delay. So I added a yield just to make sure that the watchdog timer doesn't kill my thingy. Uh, so my, my sketch and the ESP keeps running. And also I have the uh, logic for the word animation. As I said, it just lights up a random number, well, not actually a random number, but it's also defined in the settings.h, how many letters gets lit up and what's the millisecond delay between each of the letters. And finally, if you are planning to use a different display, then you need to overwrite or need to rewrite this method. So the drawer pixel method is something that I pass is I pass the x y coordinates of the display that gets uh, needs to be lit, which actually generated by the pixel number divided by ten and the you know by modulus ten. But um, in here I convert it to the actual three by three display. So as you can see, for every single pixel I'm lighting up or you know turning on nine different pixels. In, in a group and that's it and then the loop is just like sort of the normal housekeeping make sure that the HTTP server is running the the uh, uptime is calculated the NTP is getting called every hour and um, we reconnect to MQTT if it was connection and then we handle all the updates and I'm just using this global variable which is called update screen uh, which can take up the value of one when it's you know, the, the, uh, the words are getting displayed or two when I'm doing the animation every minute or when it's three, uh, the, the animation just lit up all the letters and I just pause it for actually a second. So it, I don't immediately, you know, delete that and replace it with the time. So that's it. And I hopefully with this, I managed to explain everything in the code and how you would use it for your word clock or you can just ignore most of it, you know, just focus on the definition. If you want to use the, you know, PX matrix display for any other display project, because, you know, the core of the code is here. And um, actually I'm not using an awful lot of uh, functions here because I'm just, you know, using pixels. So all I'm doing is display dot draw pixels. But again, if you go into the library, and if you look at the header file, you can just easily see what uh, methods are supported. So there are, you know, methods for displaying a, in, uh, like an, a bitmap image that you store in the program memory or drawing circles and lines and the usual stuff. And then, of course, letters, which I'm not doing here either. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.